This is an introduction to the MIT Deliberatorium. The Deliberatorium is an innovative internet tool whose goal is to enable better collaborative deliberation, which we can define as the systematic exploration, evaluation, and convergence on solution ideas for complex problems like climate change, and mainly for use with large, diverse, and distributed groups of participants, including stakeholders and experts. This presentation will introduce you to the concepts underlying the deliberatorium we will cover, what's wrong with current collaborative deliberation tools, and how can the deliberatorium help? So what is wrong with current deliberation tools? These include such systems as forums, blogs, email, instant messaging, wikis, and so on. In all of these systems, the interactions within them are organized by time. So people will make posts and other posts will be made in response to them run right after another. And this results in several important problems. One is the issue of scattered content. Discussions in a time-centric system typically meander from topic to topic in an unsystematic way, producing scattered content and haphazard coverage. So points that are made on a given topic may appear widely scattered throughout the discussion stream. Another issue is that people tend to cluster their discussions into multiple what we can call balkanized um, groups where they tend to talk just to people who are like-minded and not to the, the larger community. A second important issue is what we can call the soapbox problem. The last to speak in time-centric systems is the last to be heard, which encourages lots of redundant post cycles, especially for controversial topics and small voices as a result tend to get drowned out. The third major issue with time-centric systems is that there tends to be no inherent bias to well's well-founded argumentation. Uh, there is um, evidence and good posts right next to posts that are based on bias or outright spam or lies. This creates a lot of noise. So we have the issues of scattered content, the soapbox problem, and flawed argumentation which has three important effects. One is that the content is often flawed and incomplete. Second, it can be hard to make sure your voice is heard if you have something useful to say. And third, perhaps most importantly, it's hard to find the good stuff amongst all the noise. Argument mapping can help with this. It does so by the simple but powerful trick of organizing contributions by topic rather than by time. Contributions are broken down into issues, ideas and arguments. An issue represents a problem that needs to be solved. An idea represents an approach for addressing that issue and an argument represents a point for or against an idea. A for point is called a pro and against point is called a uh, con. Every point can only appear once and is attached to the point it logically refers to. A discussion in an argument map would always begin with an issue which represents the question to be addressed. That would be linked to one or more ideas representing uh, ways of addressing that issue. Ideas themselves can raise new issues and those issues of course can raise their own uh, can have their own ideas responding to them. Every idea can have a whole tree of pros and cons interleaved with each other that discuss the merits of that idea. Let us consider an example. In May of 08, the Planeta.com web forum hosted a discussion on carbon offsetting. The discussion, which ran eventually to 13 pages, was full of the usual repetition and scattered content that uh, characterizes uh, web forums in general. But when converted into an argument map, it became a map with just eight elements in it, an issue, two ideas, and five arguments. So what are the benefits of using argument mapping in this way? First of all, there is no scattering. All the content on a given topic is co-located regardless of who authored it. There is no soapbox problem because each point can only appear in the argument map once, so there is no room for repetition. Small voices can be heard. And there is a bias towards well-founded arguments. The system makes the presence or absence of arguments for against ideas quite visible. So the result is you have more complete, better supported argument, all voices can be heard, and it's easy to find the good stuff. Let's look at an example. 
Let's say we want to come up with a government policy to meet targets for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The starting issue in this case would be something like, what government policy can best meet our targets for reducing greenhouse gas emissions? Several of us have some ideas, so we enter them. One is the idea of using a carbon tax. The second is the idea of using cap and trade. Each of these ideas, however, raise other questions. If we use carbon taxes, for example, we need to decide how high should the taxes be, so we enter an issue for that purpose. If we use cap and trade, to give another example, we need to decide how the emission certificate should be distributed. Should they, for example, be given away for free by the government? That would be one idea. Or should they be sold to the highest bidder, let's say through an auction? That would be a second idea for that issue. Finally, we might want to capture some of the pros and cons of these different ideas. These arguments represent the debate around an idea. So for example, for cap and trade in general, we might note as a con that cap and trade is prone to be gained by industry. And someone may add a pro supporting that point, which says you're right, see the European Union experience. So how do you use the collaboratorium? The role of authors is first to unbundle your ideas into points that each contain just one issue, idea, or argument. Next, you need to search your argument map to see where your points belong and whether they are already present or not. If it's a new point, attach a new post to the issue, idea, or argument it logically refers to. Otherwise, just refine the existing post. Most importantly, we should follow the live and let live rule. If you disagree with someone, add a con argument or a competing idea, but do not edit their post to undercut them. You should only edit a post if your goal is to strengthen it. Now, one might ask why bother? This does involve extra work compared to a web form, for example. What's in it for me? In a word, impact. Argument maps represent the kind of distilled and organized knowledge that people are hungry for. If you have something important and unique to offer, it is much more likely to be seen in an argument map than in a traditional forum. Now, it takes some practice to be able to follow these rules correctly and some people may even choose to ignore these rules in the hope of sabotaging the discussion. This is where moderators come in. Their task is to first check pending posts and all posts when initially created are have status pending. Check such posts to ensure that they are unbundled, named, typed, and located correctly and then also point out or fix structural errors if any are there. Second, certify those posts that are well structured. Only certified posts count in the sense that they can be viewed or rated by the uh, general audience, including non-authors. Finally, remove clearly inappropriate, for example, abusive or spam posts, but otherwise remain strictly content neutral. A moderator's role is not to uh, say whether or not content is good or not, but just simply whether it's well organized. Finally, a moderator's role is to reorganize the argument map as needed, by clustering related posts under new posts in order to make stuff easier to find. The role of the community in general is one, to discuss the existing posts by leaving comments on them in order to raise questions, suggest improvements, and so on. And second, to rate the existing posts to help guide the community's attention to important issues, promising ideas, and compelling arguments. This helps make high quality work salient and encourages the community to do good work. Please join us. Help create better ways to do large-scale collaborative deliberation. Learn more about critical challenges like climate change. Contribute your expertise to help solve these problems. And find others like yourself throughout the world. We hope you enjoy using the Deliberatorium. For more information on this project, go to the webpage for the MIT Center for Collective Intelligence, cci.mit.edu.